<laughs> Robin. Hey, Lush, welcome there back to is. the show, brother. How you doing? How are you, man? Yeah, I just saw you on the Not TV. Bad. Good, what's I going on? I just saw you on the TV. You were doing an interview. Uh, doing right. a lot of press, are you? Uh, just a bit. Not all Yeah, that a little bit, huh? Yeah, yeah, just, yeah, just cool. a bit for the for the book and that. You know, That's cool. Will to there. Live. Les Stroud, uh, creator of Survivor Man, dispatches... From the edge of survival. This sounds serious. Yeah, you need an echo on your voice. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> this does sound do really that. serious. And it's got a picture of you on some homemade, like, raft going down a river. Why can't you just call a boat? <laughs> just call a boat up and go, could I? Could you help me out? i got to get down this you river. I went to the middle. This is what I do with every book. If it uh -oh. has a lot of pictures, I'm in. Yeah. Less, I am in. A lot, yeah, of, there are. A lot of photos in the middle of the book. Dude, yeah, what is this? Shot. This is him just doing shot. dangerous stuff. That's, that's, that's what are you eating? eating? Grub in Australia. That yeah. was actually, you know what that tasted? It tasted like a little piece of like pork rind filled with peanut Thai paste. Oh, okay. Mm. That's 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 like, sound yeah, bad. It looks Sounds disgusting. What is it called? Uh, witchetty grub. Witchetty, witchetty grubs, grubs like Australia, maggots, yeah. right? Uh, yeah. What, what, what are they of. the larvae of? Uh, I don't know. Something big and ugly. All right. I, uh, Les, <laughs> what, what about that picture? You're in the oh, snow yeah. with a snorkel. What? Yeah, and buried under this. Yeah, I was buried under this uh, an avalanche for uh, surviving Alaska one time with uh, Discovery Channel that we did, and uh, that was. For, I got claustrophobic. I, I started swearing at the cameraman at one point because he wasn't ready, and I was buried in the snow, wow. and I was getting claustrophobic, and they had to pass me down a little tank of, of oxygen, and I was like, "Get your shot!" And I was just like, "Wow, uh, I was freaking, yeah, how, uh, wow, how deep?" Uh, not that deep, only under you know, like under a few heavy. feet, but right, <laughs> you know, a few. Feet, I mean, it's claustrophobia, right? Get it's just, the fuck out! Oh, yeah, and you got the uh, pictures of one of my favorite. Favorite episodes was uh, the the little light plane crash episode there. Oh uh, yeah, that was cool. That, you that know, that was, was probably one. one of the most fun ones I ever did because that was almost almost I got to say like being in my backyard because I was that wasn't too far. From, well, in an area where I have a cottage and stuff like, but it's way I was way out in the bush, but I know that area really well. And yeah, it felt good being out there. It was know? it was it was cool too because it, it involved so many things. It was surviving uh, the, yeah. the elements, using your resources to get some sh uh, make some shelter. And then improvise a lot of improvising using wires to make snares. Yeah. And you snared a, a rabbit. Yeah, to wow. which was totally a fluke, and 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 lucky to get that quick. You know what's really? It was uh, really. I was like, "There's no way. Come on, he's going to snare." That, that was with 12 hours, the fastest I'd ever caught a rabbit. That's something. That plane I got from a plane wreckers, and we took it in. We put it in position so I can work with it and all that. And uh, and I look, and there was and there's there was blood on the seat. Oh shit. And I and I, I asked the guy later. I said, "So what's the story behind?" It? He says, "Yeah, that was a, that was a double mm -hmm. fatality." Like wow. You're, well, wow! Thanks for oh. telling me before I get out there. Yeah, so, yeah I was kind of kind of creepy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's totally creepy. But, yeah. uh, Listen, how are the hotels around the world? <laughs> They're awesome. Oh, that's right. Which that's ones? Not you. Yeah, wrong guy. That's the other guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to. What do you take? Yeah. Yeah. What are you taking the wild with you when you go? Like they'll put you in there to see how you can survive. Do you bring water or any of that stuff or nothing? Uh, each you know, when it was Survivor Man, each each sort of thing was a little bit slightly different. Some raw seal meat in the Arctic, a little bit of water in the desert. You know, it depended on what I was doing. Because I always try to make the survival story fit to what's going on. And and when I say stories, because I'm there to really sort of go through this survival odyssey and then tell the story. It's like, okay, well, what fits here? So I had like a Land Rover in the in the desert, or or a, you know, a dog team in the in, in the in the uh, in the Labrador, that sort of thing. Do you get stung by bees a lot? <laughs> I hate bees. Uh, that's the one thing that freak. It, it's it's like in the jungle. Uh, uh, the worst thing. One of the stories in the book is about Yossi Ginsberg, and he he had everything happen to him. He was like 19 days in the jungle, in the Amazon jungle, and at one point, on one day alone, he slides down a mud embankment and impales his anus. Oh, oh, oh man! Fuck. And about oh. two hours later, he's like crawling through the bush, and he stumbles on a hornet's nest. And in the Amazon jungle, hornets, which are like, they're like, oh. they make, like, and he puts our, his our hands hornets are pussies compared to the Amazon yeah. jungle. Wow. Hornets, yeah. And it's just like everything went wrong. But hornets are the one thing that always kind of like, hornets. always like, okay, everything's going on, it's going on, but if I run into a hornet's nest, I'm done. Man. But when He's you, in the jungle. I can think of another letter I wouldn't like to see in the jungle. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, but wait, when you, when you stumble on hornets, do you, are there, there nests in the air or do you kick them by mistake? There you go. Um. Uh, nests in the air, kick them by, the mis Jesus. by mistake. Have you seen them? <laughs> oh, yeah, all the time. Yeah, that's not fun. Oh, wait a minute. Who's the who's the Ozzy Osbourne fan? I am. Oh, right. Yeah. 
You know what? Yeah, I just I just did up. Uh, and I was asked to. Uh, I played uh, harp on uh, the Wizard on a Tony Iommi tribute album up uh, up north. They're do, they, they're putting together. They all nice. the original members of uh, of uh, Black Sabbath, uh, different or different members were playing on the album, and I went and blew the harp for the Wizard. Oh. And it's uh, I met Tony Iommi years ago when I was producing much music up in Canada. Did you pl- like, did you play with Tony on that? Was no, he... no, it's a tribute album oh, for him. Okay, that's great. Yeah, that so great. it was awesome. Yeah, uh, so I know it's a total tangent on the book. No, that's but, cool, uh, man. Cool. Yeah, I knew somebody was that was an yeah, Aussie no, fan. Jimmy's yeah. the biggest Aussie fan. I do There's love no him. one bigger. Well, also, I told you know what I did was uh, they said we'll just go and of course I listened to Aussie's plan and Aussie's heart plan is is not the best heart plan. Uh, but so I went in and I had to do this thing and so I said well can I just like give it and he said yeah give it so I actually went sort of Jimi Hendrix harp on the beginning of the whole thing. Harp? Do you mean harmonica? Or no? Harmonica. Yeah. Oh, okay. For the I'm thinking you know I know. Uh, yeah, but when he said harp, I'm thinking silly. heavy music. I'm like that doesn't make yeah 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 okay harp. Sorry, slang for harmonica. Oh okay, blue slang for harmonica. Like, I mean you got harp with you buddy. Yeah, it's like that. Kind of, uh, so no, yeah, it was very, it was totally awesome. So I just freaked it out, and the guys loved it. So that's we got great. This whole sort of me on harmonica, Jimi Hendrix sort of intro to the Wizard, and then they go into classic Wizard. Oh, right on. I would love to play cool. fucking on an Iomi, just a tambourine, anything that a non-musical <laughs> man could play. I'll tap my feet like Larry Craig. <laughs> what, what was the? Uh, <laughs> Thank you. What was the worst thing you ate in the wild? Uh, question, worst understand. thing, you know what? The last, the last show of uh, Beyond Survival, uh, which was the, you know, the series Beyond Survival. Sure. That was the se- series, of, uh, the latest series I've got the, that they're running. It's, uh, I went in and I ate a, a sago grub, which looked like the witchy grub in that book. Uh, and but it was like feet away from a wild pig that they trapped and pig mud everywhere. It was really uh, disgusting. And this thing was undulate, undulating and kids are hanging it from their mouth. And I, so I go and I eat it and it was really disgusting. It wow, was that is nasty. What, what yeah. it tastes like. I, uh, I don't know, puke or something. It was just shit. Uh, it was just like, uh, can, can I keep that? You shit? know what it was? Can I keep it down though? Well, I actually said in the shot, I said, you know that moment when you're out for dinner and you're having a wicked steak and you put in a piece of grizzle you didn't mean to eat oh. and you're sitting there and you're like, you're starting to sweat and you're looking for a piece of bread. It's like, oh my God, mm. I can't swallow this, but I'm, I can't like spit it out. Uh, <laughs> it's like, and it was like one of those moments. I was like, oh God, how am I yeah, going to get this Because they expect down? you to keep it down. Yeah, they well, don't expect you to throw you don't it don't want to insult them. Uh, right, right. Yeah, a bunch start- of shamans in the middle of the jungle are finished tattooing me with a rusty nail. And they're like, yeah, but I'm going to spit out your food. Cause you, you know. if, you're, if you're starving to death, uh, would you like that looks hideous, but if you're starving, your body would keep that in, like right, like your body has to know that. Yeah, you get over plate fright pretty quick. That's all. It's all about plate fright, right? Plate so fright, that's why uh, people eat just about anything. You go, you know, most people go seven hours without food and they'll eat just about anything. You yeah, go three days, yeah. you know, scorpions look good. Wow. Well. Especially Damn. if someone says this is good for you, you can eat it, and especially if they eat it first in front of you, then it's like, all right, how you do you eat a scorpion? To me. Just take the tail off. I guess. You just nip the. Nip, you got to. You got to carefully nip the tail off, and and then you can eat. And it's like you know, it's like eating a little shrimp. Same family. right? Do you kill it while it's dead? I mean, you kill it or eat it alive? You kill well, it while it's dead. I know. I On the it. original Survivor man, and I I ate it for life. That was pretty much just showmanship, eating it alive. But uh, you cook it and on a on a on a you know on a barbie, and then you get like this, like on a shish kebab, and then you get a nice little crispy. It's like eating little chicken is wing ends or something. Yeah, it tastes awesome. Not bad. Not bad at all. It tastes like little shrimps. Oh, wow. The Chinese yeah. like weird. Yeah. Well, see, that's the thing is, is you know, sometimes you'll see on different survival shows that oh, everything looks so gross. Oh, this is really gross. You know what? No, it's not. You're just making it look gross. It actually tastes good. <laughs> we, were t- we were talking about it earlier. Uh, An Idiot Abroad is a new show, and uh, the guy went to China, and he was watching a guy eat a fetus, like uh, the uh, eggs. Chicken. Yeah, yeah. yeah, chicken eggs. Are chicken eggs. So they let them. Fertilized, and they're growing in there, yeah, and they let they them, eat it like They it. let yeah. them develop a little bit, and then it's a delicacy, and they, they showed the guy taking the shell off, and it was uh, developing fucking well, we, yeah, it's it's and all like the the you, uh, up in up in northern Quebec they eat this stuff where they take they used to take the stomach of a caribou they put all of the organs of the caribou into the stomach hang it from a tree for about two weeks in the summer oh my and then come back and that's a delicacy so what people eat around the world is Wait, amazing the man. stomach of a caribou hung in a bag no huh, the, 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 it is the bag yeah right? that is the bag and they put all the here. organs inside it and they we let got it rot for two weeks back there and I, then they and then they uh, eat it. I just thought it I just kind of I just gagged <laughs> it's like haggis I just gagged much, are there flies on it when they come to uh, it there's everything on it yeah uh, would you just, try it it's wow. disgusting but you, you could you could eat just we could eat way you know lots of things we could eat way more than what we think we can it's you know safe or we not, could eat yeah. a lot more people think oh you touch anything raw do they get food poisoning you think no, no, but no? you know what? It's not going from truck to shelf to shelf to wrapper to shelf to your plate. But there's probably bugs on it, though. How do you eat it with bugs on it with yeah, flies? Yeah, eat the bugs. Bugs don't... Uh, eat the bugs. 
What the fuck? Things. The rest of the world is awful. Yes. <laughs> I hate the planet. <laughs> what the Jimmy. shit? What a fucking burger. <laughs> what are you crazy. doing? Who looks at that and goes, let's hang the fucking stuff? Hey, wait a minute. Didn't weeks. Ozzy eat a dove? He did, uh, yes, but that was to be, that was that was for the record contract. Okay, <laughs> I was just being ironic. I got to ask you something about the uh, production yeah. of of the show. Yeah. Now you're you're alone. Yeah. When you do this, yeah, yeah. those long shots you do. Yeah. Now you got to set the camera up on on a tripod and then kind of walk across at a distance. Yeah. And then go back, get the camera, because it, it you know it, it's a very majestic look, but it seems like something that. You wouldn't do to just like, hey, here, I have a handheld camera. It, it is just for pure production value. Well, yeah, the, the whole thing was when I first started, do, I did this, I started in 2001, right after mm -hmm. Survivor Series hit big. Then I came on with Survivor Man and everything sort of flowed from that. The reality was that I could do the home video thing and it looked like a home video. It'd be crap. You wouldn't want to watch a show. But I'm also a filmmaker, right? So I had to, I, I had a lot of passion in my filmmaking. Okay. So I had to come, I just say, well, if I'm going to present what it's like to survive in the desert, I also want to tell the story properly and well and use good cameras and, and good camera angles. And so my passion drove me to climb the cliff and put the camera up and show where I had to go. And do all that stuff. Okay, you know? that's yeah. That I wasn't sure about your your filmmaking background. Yeah, I used uh, to produce much music okay. and you that know I rock videos. Now. That's all that sort of stuff. Yeah, because I, I picture every time I see one of those shots, I'm like, that son of a bitch climbed you know up yeah, that yeah, yeah. thing, popped a friggin' tripod, got the shot, focused, and yeah. then went down, walked across, had to check it, make sure it was good. It's like nah. Jesus Christ, it's taking nah, a while. I'm not no wonder he's starving. Yeah. Eating bugs. I'm not buying it. No, no he's not buying it's it. Time to admit, you had another guy the whole time. Yeah, oh, yeah, I had a whole team of guys. Yeah, <laughs> crew. <laughs> Absolutely. Stunt coordinators, you yeah. know, safety climbers, like, all of it. Right? It looks like when Shatner's <laughs> fighting in Star Trek. Like, who's that guy? <laughs> I hate him. <laughs> I, I got to ask the little boy question, man. Uh, were you ever scared sleeping in the middle of nowhere by yourself? In the uh, dark? I, I, I used to go camping here once in a while. Yeah. And, and, and we would be like, uh, maybe a mile from everybody else, and I was scared shitless. I can't fucking fun and make believe I wasn't scared. Yeah, Every I, fucking noise drove me nuts. Well, the worst for me was probably in Africa. Uh, the lot because lions, you know, lions, polar bears, great white sharks, they're they're opportunistic eaters, right? So they are predators, and and uh, they'll they'll eat you if they get they got opportunity. We can sugarcoat it, but that's the way it is. Yeah. And so when I was in lion, lion territory, uh, that was that in polar bear territory, but lion territory kind of freaked me out. I listened to an attack, a lion attack happened just a few hundred yards away, and I was just what was the I was sleeping around like thorns all around me, and it was. Uh, uh, it was, uh, oh gosh, I can't remember. He was attacking Some animal. died. Some ungulate died. Something some some hooked animal was dinner that night. And so uh, you slept in thorns, why? So they wouldn't stumble on you? It's just a way of survival in Africa. You build these oh, wow. thorn corrals. Or, you know, you talk about sleeping out in the wild, right? But you have to build the thorn corral around and then go to sleep. And it's not going to stop a lion. It's just going to slow him down a bit. Right? Yeah, so yeah. That's Maybe the key. You an and you're not really, you're not really sleeping. You're opening that eye and just waiting for that sun to If you to get 20 minutes, up. that's like a good slow. Yeah, okay. Do you, how do you defend yourself? Do you have any weapons with you? Of any kind, oh, maybe a, a club pistol. or something like that. The a odd club. show, maybe had a, a, a bow and arrow that I've had, you know, yeah. but not much. No, just defend yourself with doing it right, you know, building the thorn crowd. Like I built that crowd, and then I also built it around a tree base so that if it was coming in at me, at least I had, I could go off the tree then. So you got an yeah. escape route. Always got to have an escape route. Yeah, what are you going to do? If he can't get through the thorns, you're going to have trouble going out the other end of the thorns. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like you're just yeah. trapped. You're like a big thorn bowl. And that's assuming there's only like one of them. <laughs> could be like a buffet bowl. of lions coming in. Yeah. Fuck that. Look, I'm eating out of a thorn bowl. This is great. <laughs> yeah, this is a little spiky, but this guy's delicious. What about polar bears are scared? They're huge, aren't they? Yeah, polar bears, I mean, for a polar bear, you know, they're beautiful. And you can, yeah, you might be able to scare them away and all, just shoot a shotgun up in the air. With it, but the reality is you're a big walking pink seal to them. Mm. You know, they're, they're, they're opportunistic e eaters, just like a great white shark, you know. Uh, most animals are not predators. They're, they really don't want you. They want to, even grizzlies don't want you. They could care less. But polar bears are different. I gotta, uh, I gotta say wow. for the marine biologists oh. out there, because my brother is one, mm. he would disagree with the great white thing. About, about it being a predator? Uh, yeah. Uh, what, would say, what, what ends up happening is they bump into you thinking you're something else. They do bite, and then they don't want anything to do with you. Well, the, in most cases. In most cases. What about the cases where they don't? The real, you're True. right. He's True. right. The reality is that they do a taste test. The problem is that their taste test, you lose an arm. Yeah, right. They yeah, literally yeah. go, oh, I wonder what that is. Right. Nibble, and then there goes my leg right. on the nibble, and we call it a shark attack. Right. That said, 
They certainly that's have. bad enough, they, Yeah, it's bad enough, and but they've eaten before. I just, had to bring, I just had to bring it up because I don't want to deal with the, my, the call from my brother but later. Tells, he's right, it's though. Something, it's something they argue all the time that they really don't want to eat humans. Something tells me also a hungry shark is going to eat you. Sure. It doesn't – like he might be like, oh, well, this ain't as good as a seal, but – no. And he's right, though. I mean, I, t- I spend a lot of time defending polar bears and great white sharks and lions for the bad rap they get. But in the end, no matter which way you slice it, People have been eaten by lions. And people have been eaten by tigers and great whites and, what, and polar bears. And what I said doesn't matter mm. because if you're in the water and you see a shark, you're not going, well, they don't really want me. Yeah. I'm staying in here. This Get one's got a, it's got a nice look in his eye. He'll right, be all right. right. Yeah. Did you swim with sharks? I've, all, may, all of, I've hand-fed tons of them. I mean, oh, we did, I did Shark Week yeah. for three years, I, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I, I scuba dive. I haven't in a while because I, I had a kid, unfortunately. Not unfortunately for that, but unfortunately <laughs> for, <laughs> unfortunately for my, my hobby. That wow. you know of, anyway. Wow. Yeah. And... Uh, <laughs> And every time we jump in, you know, the, the dive instructor's like, oh, hopefully we'll see a shark today. And I'm the guy going, fuck, I don't need to see a fucking yeah. shark. I, there's plenty of cool stuff down there. I don't want to yeah. see one of those uh, it's, it, it's awesome. I've, I've, I've ridden on the backs of, of, of tiger sharks and yeah. Caribbean reef sharks and hand-fed great whites. And it's pretty awesome when you're down there and you see a shark. It changes the diving experience. Have you sure. ever seen, uh, help me out, uh, largest animal, blue, uh, blue whale? Is it the blue whale? Blue whale, hundred yards. Huge, yeah. Have you yeah. ever seen one of those? In How the do you know that? Because I, I I went to marine biology yards. college. Yeah, I lied. I, I have not seen. That. Uh, I remember that when I was a kid. You went the, to the Museum of Natural History. No, when I was a kid in school, they were talking about blue whales. They said it's as big as this auditorium. They said it was a hundred yards. And I was like, oh, I just remember that fact. Is that true? <laughs> They're that big. Yeah, they're. Ma- I mean, uh, what I'm hoping to do is get in with a whale shark. I haven't done the whale shark dive thing yet, which is pretty awesome. Uh, the only whales I've seen is uh, I've, is the killer whales up in the west coast of Canada. I've sea kayaked, I got chased by a sea lion, and sea kayaking past killer whales, which is pretty awesome. In the water itself, lots of sharks and tons of sharks. But because uh, I'm there for that, and I'm there, I was there for Shark Week, right? But, but and of course we're feeding them. We're throwing wow, chum in the water, brings that, them all around. That's a that's a blue whale. That's a blue yeah. Whale. Wow. I learned a lot about them when I was on a Japanese fishing boat. My friends and I getting lamb. <laughs> oil and fun trinkets <laughs> <laughs> shitty culture <laughs> <laughs> fucking savages there's eight whales left they just them they're little dicks they can't stop killing eight whales left. i can't stand that that stupid yeah, murder whale like it thing. annoys me mm. Mm. fucking whale fin if you eat whale fin you should just be shot unless you're surviving it's different <laughs> you saw the cove right yeah, it made me want to fucking just bomb them all over again. I was so irritated. Oh, wow. Really annoyed me, that lack of respect for fucking... Yeah, the, yeah. yeah. Rick O'Bear is, uh, from the, is a friend of mine, and, and uh, yeah, absolutely. When I, was, when I was in Malaysia with the Sea Gypsies on Beyond Survival, uh, we, we were talking through an interpreter, and they're shark finners. I was like, yeah, well, mm-hmm. no. And I asked, well, where's, like, they're saying there's no, no sharks here. Well, what, what do you mean, uh, what do you mean you don't have any sharks here? They used to have tons of sharks there. Oh, we, they, they went away somewhere. I was uh, like, yeah, yeah, they, they went away. Well, it's because you, you, you fin them all and yeah. sold them to the market. But then they throw them back in alive, like, with their fins cut off. They just, yeah. they have no, what happens is after you get the shit kicked out of you in a world war and you're, and you're so humiliated as a nation, honestly, you just lose regard for all of the life. That's, I really believe that's what happened. Really? How could you be such a fucking, hunting is one thing. How could you cut the fins off something and throw it back alive? What kind of yeah, a that does terrible, terrible cool. culture are you yeah. that you could do that? What am I talking about? Shut up. No, it's very <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> probably probably very cool. You know, it's a bizarre it's thing, though. You get all around the world and you look at the different, like all these, like with Beyond Survival, with all those cultures that I survived with, it's really hard because, yeah, a lot of them are doing things that to them they grew up with and, and you're going like, oh, man. But you're right. In, in, so, in the bigger nations, you just want to go, come on. They don't know anything. You guys, you guys have scientists. You guys have, yeah, you yeah. know, experts. Yeah. Come on. You know what you're doing. And I, I you know, I agree. It, I mean, it's probably because they know a, what's going down. It's official. Yeah. Don't care. Yeah. That's Where they don't care. 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 Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. So it's different in the jungle if you're hunting and you're eating. and you're, if, if you're using saliva as a lubricant or a beverage, <laughs> kill what you want. If you think caribou guts are delicious when they're spoiled, you know what? <laughs> when kill what you want. When they're spoiled hanging from a tree. <laughs> yeah. Where's the, the most and what was the most primitive uh, culture you, you ever encountered? Probably, uh, I don't know if you guys uh, saw, saw these. Uh, probably the last show, which was the Mantuai in, uh, in uh, uh, the Indonesian jungle. And they, they tattooed me with a rusty nail. Uh, and a stick. And, well, here, Why did you allow that? Yeah, let's see that. 
Wow. Oh, that's fucking that's cool. cool. So that's, I got yeah. that's on. I got one on each shoulder. Dude, and, then, cool. and they do this. If you watch the show, they, they have this little stick thing, and, and they, it's like. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. And, and, and it, 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 it looks it, to be a bit it was, painful. It was. You know what? <laughs> on this, on the other shoulder, they did it, and then they they tried to explain to me, oh, the, the shaman didn't put enough ink in. We have to do it again. And so it's like going over. You know, you got a, a cut already, and then you stab the cut. Oh, it was like that all wow. over again. And I was like, oh, okay, here we go. How long did it take? Holding it. Uh, it was hours. Les, can I can I tweet that? Yeah, of course. Wow, yeah, that, see that is homemade something. tattoo with a rusty nail. Oh man, but <laughs> Aren't they were, you worried they were about pretty sh- primitive. Yeah, well, they were like they're 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 beautiful, oh, yeah, you know, and Stone wow. Age. Wow. But, uh, Damn you! Oh man, were you worried about getting like a tetanus or something? Or no, they they rubbed me with like uh, plants and things after and they're in the stream. Putting and, it on this person's it was, uh, head. Yeah, that's what I had done. Exactly, exactly. What, that, what, is, what watching it with the stick. And what does that and, tattoo mean? Does that well, mean you know, that's the thing, and I say it in the show. Everybody's got like intense meaning. You know what they end up telling me? They just like to make themselves look cool. <laughs> uh, you know, oh, so much for the big spirit. Now, yeah, there is a story. Yeah. Like, these ones are supposed to be in relation to their, their relationship to the sun, which at one point they, they pushed farther back from the earth with their bows and arrows. And so, but thank, in the end, they just, like to, look, they just yeah. like to look good. They yeah. just like to look good. Thanks for doing that. You see uh, the video that I think it just popped last week of that tribe? Where the guy flew over in the plane that yeah. they were never discovered before or whatever. Been known and, it, and it was the first contact or the first not, video taken of these guys? Maybe that might be the case, but we, the, it, they've been known about for a long time. I mean, well, what tribe there's, is it there's again? A, uh, I don't know the name, but there's 70 uncontacted tribes in the Amazon jungle. And when I was in there with the Warani, 16 uh, or so mile, miles or so away was a, a tribe called the Tagede, which were very uh, aggressive. They were an offshoot. And they said, you know, if, if we go down there in ones or twos, they'll just kill us. If you go down there in a big group, you'll never find them and i was doing my survivor man thing just up river from them What's the whole week i'm you? like oh you got to be kidding me well i didn't know until i got there and then they tell me like, well, this is they? they're yeah, so somewhere. isolated because they all have at&t service <laughs> 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 they don't fuck around though they'll kill you not even yeah, twice. yeah well because they're just protecting themselves and they right? sure i'm sure they don't have laws <laughs> no their law you know yeah, they laws, cri- they had, the warani um Really wonderful people that that I learned from, but man, they they were they were listed as the most violent people in history at one point. Wow! Yeah, like back they, these are the people back in '57 or so massacred five uh, uh, missionaries. Till and I met what, one of the guys, <laughs> a guy named Dewey, was one of the guys involved in that massacre, and he was like a really beautiful man. But he was like, for them, they thought they were being, you know, that there was this whole thing that went on, and someone said, oh, they're oh, here was to that like where kill they us and that. Took and the rock and like, it was no, they they uh, they speared them all. Wow. Oh man! Uh, speared. Yeah, was, they thought but, they were being attacked. Yeah, and then what they never had in this in this culture, they never had the culture of forgiveness. They didn't know what forgiveness was, so every single thing that happened was a vendetta killing. Like, oh, well, you tripped and hurt your ankle. Well, that must be your fault, because I don't like you anyway, and you must have put that on me, so I need to kill your son. And it was just wow. on and on, and, and then now that you and you just go back and forth like this. We have ancestors. But it's not like that. that now. It's called management here. Yeah. The, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, bad radio show. We're taking your first one. <laughs> right. I love all the shots you're taking. God bless you. Uh, why not? Hey, uh, <laughs> I'm going to trust someone on Twitter. I don't know this, so Uh-oh. in case it's bad, I don't know. Uh, you got a Bigfoot story? Yeah, Please ask Les maybe. Stroud about his Bigfoot story. Uh, maybe. He means the guy in Strike Force. Did Do you I fight him? I'm sorry. Is it, is it a... That's uh, a real story, yeah, yeah. I would yeah. love to hear it if you want yeah, to tell yeah. it. All right, well, well it, when I was uh, shooting, uh, was this Beyond Survival? No, Survivor Man in Alaska. Um, and, and it was not my first experience out there with something like this. It's the second time. And uh, I was I was doing a shot, you know, you see Survivor Man, you know, I do the shots and that. And then I, I, the camera was put away over there. And I was just like, in between shots, I'm still working, so i got to grab some more grass. I'm getting more grass and shit. And... Uh, and I hear this big rustle in the, in, in the tree not too far from me. And, and, I, and I, I freeze, right? Because all the hairs went up in the back of my neck. And I've been around grizzlies and moose and bear and all. But this was different. It felt weird. And I'm looking over at the camera. I'm thinking, okay, okay, hang on a second. If I could even just flip it on for the audio. But, I, but it was too far away, and I'm just standing there. And I hear this rustle. And then I hear this, all right? Now, I've heard everything in a bush. I've never heard a moose do that or a bear do that. To me, that sounds like an ape, right? Wow. And he did it about five more times, really loud, 50 yards away. And then when I finally made a movement to go get the camera, he went crashing off through the bush. I was like, the rest of that week out there alone, I was just like, holy crap. 
And uh, so I'm, I'm not going to say what it was. I don't know what it was. Is it possible it was an ape? Was there? Well, was okay. Let me ask you. If somebody says to you, do you? A... Well, someone says, do you believe in Bigfoot? You're going to roll your eyes and go, oh, I don't know. I call know. him Sasquatch. Right. Sasquatch, Sasquatch, buddy. Yeti. But if but if someone says to you, do you think it's possible? That small pockets of bipedal ape populations exist hidden away in the dark corners of the world <laughs> that have a strong intuitive sense and sense energy. And then that's a different question to ask. Yes. Then do you believe in Bigfoot? And you go, oh, hang we on have a found them already, though. There's a whole bit. Like, well, well, what about the fish? Those fish they found off New Jersey and the Philippines they thought extinct for 500 million years. They find like thousands of them in a school. It's, it's like, not like oh, a fish is going to end up you in know? your garbage pail in your backyard yeah, though, rummaging for well, food. <laughs> and then you've got millions of anecdotal references from people who say, what? I had this, and this happened, and rocks are thrown at me. And what, what, what fish? Yeah. Uh, Silicant, I think it was called. Silicant. Uh -huh. Silicant. Oh, yeah. Silicant. 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 Female comedian. <laughs> uh, here we go. <laughs> ah, Jimmy. So over. Someone had to go there. doing better than that one. What? Um, wait, wait. Uh, that wait. did not come from me. You, no, so, of course not. I think it would be uh, tougher to discover every everything living in the oceans. Sure it would, yeah. But uh, as far as on land, you think we, you really think there's stuff out there we still haven't discovered? Yeah, and I'm not talking yeah, about sure. maybe uh, tiny shit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about sizable shit. We're still finding mammals uh, in in Papua New Guinea and birds and things like that, and that's you know fairly sizable. I mean, it's not like the, they've gone out and, and done the whole sort of army satellite uh, uh, you know uh, heat camera thing to try and find you know Sasquatch. They haven't done that, you know. But so why haven't we? It's always I don't know. It's so money. Much, there's so much interest in the. the It'd be whole cool. If someone, I've, been, I've been asked to do it. Why in a haven't series. we really fucking? Uh, gone out there and, and, and answered this question once and for Jesus, all. Jesus, he's going to kill it. And why haven't we found any dead <laughs> dead ones? That oh, was always my that's question. A good, but then the yeah. question is, how often do you find a dead moose? I, I would mm. imagine. Because within often? moments, it's it's eaten up. You know, well, wolves, ravens, true. coyotes. When do you find a dead bear? It dies. But wolves. we have found them. Uh, I haven't found any, but... Have you found? I mean, when, mm. where? Or maybe some it happens. I, rarity, yeah. Byproducts thereof. But you got to go. Okay, but that's because there's millions or yeah. th hundreds of thousands of moose. It's hard if to argue only with that like, because like you're in the woods more than, more than me. But it, well, let's say there's only eight Sasquatch here and four over there and three over there. Uh, you know, now yeah, you're trying to find that dead skeleton. Yeah. Like I agree with you. Why haven't we found any skeletons? Because well, then it's like wait a minute. There's hundreds of thousands of moose. That's why you know a hunter stumbles upon a skeleton. Mm -hmm. You know, or but I guess they have footprints, right? And yeah. rocks thrown. So many of them have been hoaxed, though. The footprints, like the biggest ones That's have all been admitted as hoaxes. Even, even the guy in the... Uh, Camera. The, with the Bigfoot, yeah, yeah where it looks yeah. like he's actually trying to do some kind of a shuffle. Um, <laughs> he is dancing. The best part yeah. was when Jim Carrey did that in the, uh, in the Who... In the Who remake, when he, they oh, yeah. shot of him as, as as the Grinch in the same it's, in the same pose. It is such an obscure reference that everyone. Seems I know. To I, I like. That. I was seeing well, if you were awake for that one. In California. Yeah. Too early in the morning for that. <laughs> no, <laughs> no I, I love. Well, that. you knew it. You got it. Oh, though. I know that one. Yeah, it's great. 1967. I used to watch those all the time in search of. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Arcane reference. Leonard Nimoy. Hey, what do you think they're gonna find under the? Uh, they're, they're they're drilling in this lake. That's been covered by ice for like... Monsters! <laughs> that's exactly what I was thinking. It's uh, Sasquatch. For like 13 Frozen million years Frozen. in Russia. The Russia or in Greenland or something. It's been covered by ice for like 13 million years and they're drilling into it uh, to see what's alive. Cause I think there's still water underneath. Really? really? Yeah. Mm. And it's been isolated? Yeah. Uh, I'll look. I'll Google it because... Uh, that's, I, that, I didn't just totally stop the conversation oh, no, with, <laughs> with a dumb child. The thing question. that freaks me out on the deep drilling all that is when they get into, and I don't know, I don't know about this, but it's the whole, like, how deep are they tapping into? Or what, what are they tapping into in terms of earthquake zones and water zones? And yeah, That's yeah. the stuff that's kind of freaky. It's like, you know, when when they is that just conspiracy crap? Or is at some point someone's going to tap into a vein of something that just goes, thank you, bang! Yeah, you ah, know? pressure release, yeah. yeah exactly. It's a lake in Antarctica. It's been isolated from everything else on Earth for 15 million years. They're probably going to find rock and Water, yeah, maybe that's, <laughs> that's great. We yeah. confirmed yeah. there's rocks down there. It's beneath thirteen thousand feet of ice. Jeez. That's like what, almost uh, four miles. It's, it's, it's is, a big skating rink. That's yeah, a lot three miles. of ice. Yeah, damn, that's a lot of ice. I think there's a guy underneath. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> hey, thanks. <laughs> yeah. I've been waiting. <laughs> or a hat store. <laughs> Throw Magnum Man down there. Yeah, just <laughs> something totally bizarre. They're looking to, uh, I guess, clone a, a mammoth. Or mastodon. Uh, it's going to happen within six years. Do the Jurassic Park thing? The permafrost. Yeah. 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 Take some of the uh, DNA. Uh, take a cell. Uh, use an elephant, I guess, um, uh, to to get the cell to start dividing. Use that little electrical charge. Bam. And then uh, maybe have a, a little woolly mammoth. Well, clearly Steven Spielberg showed that it was possible. Yes. So, you know.
Yeah, that would be, that would be interesting though to be able to see that. It's uh, probably it's a, coming. A moral the question, Jurassic Park but... is probably not that far off. It's yeah, probably yeah. It's probably coming, yeah. That is a and the moral creepy, question but... will just be shelved in the name of science well, anyway. So. And, 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 and amusement parks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They had another article make a lot on the Mooly Mammoth. It. It's happening. They're, they're, they're hoping within six years. Really? Really? Yeah, there there is. Is. This article just hit yet a couple days ago. They look like and they we were just smell. About so this. I just cloned Wooly Mal- <laughs> Mammoth years. in five years. Jeez. <laughs> I'd pet one, but they'd probably stink. <laughs> well, well, I guess because they've got actual organic material now, not just not just fossil, right? Yeah, yeah. I think it was the Arctic. God, look at that thing. It just looks so But it's really do it once it's cloned. Put it in a zoo and they're charge not, people. They're not That's starting right. small, are they? It's like, we're no. going to clone yeah, yeah. a cricket. <laughs> <laughs> we decided to start with the woolly mammoth just yeah. to see. <laughs> that, is, uh, that is something. Oh, Dolly the sheep. Yeah, they, they cloned oh, that right. thing. It would be great, though. Wooly if, the mammoth? <laughs> yeah, but nature said goodbye to that fucking monstrosity 10 million years ago. They obviously <laughs> well, they weren't meant to be here. Maybe maybe 100. Big dumb hairy elephant. 10,000. It's like an ago. elephant in a vest. Fuck it. You know, I, like, I like regular elephants. <laughs> elephant in a vest. I'm gonna they may want to be here, though. Yeah. That's true. I'm, I'm back. Really happy. Yeah, hey. Whew. Hey, remember me? That would be odd, though, to yeah. see things like that. And then dinosaurs would just be ridiculous. I don't think the climate would be very good for dinosaurs, though, now. No, it's the city that hate it. No, I don't mean the city. <laughs> I mean, like, hands <laughs> running over their dumb feet. The social climate. The social yeah. climate's all wrong. <laughs> you know? Yeah. They never adopt a political correctness. <laughs> their little teeny arms. <laughs> dinosaurs hey, are dicks. I, uh, I'm They're definitely pissed off. Gonna... They can't reach their penis. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely reading this one, though. Yeah. This is, like, right up my alley. You'd be a great guy to have around uh, for an apocalypse or something. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, or zombie invasion. Yeah. Anything uh, where you yeah, need. You know, you, you touched on something there. So yeah. All I'm going to say is there's something coming on that with me. Oh, really? Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. That's all I can say. All right. And I, I, I might have an idea what it is, but okay. All right. All right. That's, that's kind of cool because... Uh, Zombies have just taken off. People Holy crap! Are really fascinated with the whole zombie thing, and uh, what, what uh, contingency plans, what you would do, oh, yeah. what works, what doesn't work, and it is fascinating. I know. I know people that, completely. That, you know. I know people that actually go to a city and they scope out the escape route first. It's like, okay, what's my escape? In case the zombie apocalypse happens while we're <laughs> right. visiting your aunt in Minnewaukee, <laughs> you got uh, to know where I want to know where we go. That's prepared. Yeah, that's bizarre. That's, that's preparedness. It it's uh, yeah. My son's big into the whole uh, uh, Call of Duty zombies. Oh, yeah, uh, He's, yeah. like, killing zombies every afternoon. Yeah, Call of Duty yeah. zombies is pretty fun to play. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's a good one. It's, it's, I think it's bigger than vampires now, the whole zombie thing. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a one movie genre that's never uh, never taken a loss. Every zombie zombies? movie makes a profit. Wow. Every single yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. They are just... It's bizarre. The people love that whole concept of having to survive in that post-apocalyptic world, yeah. and especially when you get, you know, throw zombies in. But I think any kind of post-apocalyptic survival thing uh, is intriguing to people. I, lo- I know I love it. I, 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 I would, I think I would love to. To see that part of uh, history, see the, like the, the end of end of uh, the it's, world. Well, it's, it's off the scale too. It's off the scale survival. It's not like when we do, right. you know, the, the the expansion of Survivor Man and the camping and all that sort of stuff. This is off the scale stuff. Now it's like, all right, and then you throw in the fantasy, which is the zombies. Yeah, you know, now. Uh, but or just the apocalyptic, like the road. It's like okay, that's why the road. Well, I guess did you know? Because you're watching the road, going, huh? Okay, that almost that almost kind of makes sense. You yeah, know, that's yeah. kind of what it would. Hey, that's kind of what it'd be like, you know. There's no zombies; it's just but, but there's horrid people that would do yeah. you harm with the no uh, uh, no laws, no yeah. consequences. Cannibalism. Cannibalism is the road good? Yeah, I liked the road. Uh, the book? I, thought, uh, I read the book. Book? I liked the that book. That was a big. That was about a guy and his son who survived the apocalypse. Yeah. Right? I, I should read that because I've heard it. It's yeah. Yeah. The book, I never saw the movie. Which Who's is in the movie? The movie. Uh, uh, oh, Morkinson. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Vigo. I think our Vigo. I think Vigo's our boy there. Michael K. Williams has a role in that too, right? Is that the one he's in? I don't know. Does he? I yeah. think so. Omar. Guy and his, I hope they match the father and son up right. That'd be it's terrible. Help me out with that. Hey, uh, I got a good question coming in like from Rick it. in D.C. We got Les Stroud in studio, Survivor Man, <laughs> who's got a new book, Will to Live, Dispatches from the Edge of Survival. There you go. Rick, what's up? Hey, Jimmy doesn't uh, like milk. He hates milk, but I wanted to know from Les, what's the weirdest milk he's ever drank, and did he drink it directly from the tap? Uh, uh, that's a good question. Weirdest yeah. milk. Oh, weirdest right. milk. Uh, uh, man, just, um, just bad milk, uh, and, but not, not on Survivor Man. It was, it was a hunting situation and, uh, moose. Moose milk. Yeah, and blood. Moose That's gotta blood. be game. Yeah. This blood and moose milk? Uh, well, it's, you know, it's, uh, I think, isn't milk kind of like blood with just the white platelets or something? I don't oh, know. I'm oh, talking Jesus. On. Is, is that what that, milk is? Uh, isn't it? I think, doesn't... I checked, I don't know. You'd have to Google that. I think okay. it's, 
I think that's the deal there. Um, but uh, um, uh, like Jamie, I, I'm not. Oh, he got the dairy board off me. Uh, I'm, I'm not a fan of milk at all. I, no. I, my, my kids haven't drank milk ever. No, no, yeah. I, I, haven't, I, I, I haven't had. I would, it in years. I would love to do the. Yeah, no, I, I think the whole, the whole. Oh, the milk board's gonna hate me. Uh, uh, the whole saying, uh, no, it's not that calcium thing, and no, is milk blood without hem- the hemoglobin? They're no, saying no, no, it's not. It's I got the same Bob pH resemblance. I just know I don't drink milk. Yeah, I don't either. either. No, with makes that, your breast stink. Ugh, ugh, with that, goofy. we definitely got to get less out. You got. I, I'm hearing you got phone calls and stuff. Oh, okay, oh, okay. We don't want to. Uh, yeah, I'm frightfully busy. Got to go, man. Uh, Very so busy, man. Book looks great. Thank you. Loving all the pictures and uh, God, love having you on the show too. Thanks, Les. Yeah, Les is a good guy. We look forward to your like next that. project. Very exciting. Thanks, guys. All right, love Les Stroud, everyone. Thanks. The book's right. called Thanks, Will Thanks, to Live. It. Check it out. <laughs>